Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. At 7 o'clock. Okay, Six o'clock. Six o'clock, yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for saying it's seven o'clock. Old habits are hard to break when you've moved up. Uh, the uh, first order of business is the <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance led by Vice Mayor Barbara McRae. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. A Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. The next item of business is the approval of the May 7th and May 15th uh, council minutes. Call for a motion to approve if everybody's read. I have a motion, Mr. Gray? Second. Second. All in favor. Okay. Uh, the adoption of the uh, agenda for tonight, I have two things. I want to add two things to the end of it. One involves a, an event that we've been asked to take part in, uh, the Gold Star uh, Camp which are the children of uh, military people who have lost their father or mother who were involved in special operations. We've been doing it here in Franklin for a couple of years. And then a parking issue that we may want to discuss. So those are the uh, two things that we have tonight. And then I would like to move C and D up to new business. Those are both proclamations. And uh, if I'd like to move them up there so that they the people bringing the proclamations don't get tied up for a long time tonight if they'd like to leave. So, <clears throat> all right. See, if you promise that we can go around the board at the end, I won't want to adjust the agenda, but just make sure we all always do that. Well, I guess you do. Mm -hmm. okay. Sure. Okay. Make a motion to approve the agenda as uh, amended. amended. Okay. Thank you. Second. All in favor. Okay. All right. Okay. The, we have a public hearing at 6:05, and we've got about three minutes, according to the official time. Uh, who do we have signed up? Uh, Angela Moore signed up for the public hearing. Ms. Moore, do you need more than five minutes? Can I have more than five minutes? Uh, you, you, you can at the public hearing, but you're signed up for... Oh, I'm sorry. You are signed up for the public hearing. Uh, Christy Rankin, you. you need five minutes? or Five minutes, yeah. Okay, I think we could start the public hearing a minute or two late if we wanted to. Somebody else may come in. Somebody else may come in. Okay. If you'd like to go ahead up to the lectern, yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> well, and then we'll get to the public hearing. Um, I just want to thank you all for the opportunity to speak tonight. Recently, I was on the other end of the dog ordinance, um, which I had not been aware there was even a, an ordinance on dogs. Since then, I have done research and read the noise ordinance, especially for dogs. I have a few suggestions that I would like you to consider for a possibility of amending this ordinance. Uh, the first one is, according to the ordinance, it only takes two residents of the town of Franklin who may or may not be neighbors within hearing distance of the noise to file a complaint and appear in court. And if they are nearby, requiring only two residents to represent a whole neighborhood does not appear to give a fair representation of whether or not a nuisance exists. The second one, allowing only 24 hours does not seem to be a reasonable amount of time for the owner of dogs to work out a solution. And the third one is giving a resident of the town of Franklin a criminal charge of misdemeanor for a barking dog 
disturbance seems very punitive. And I just um, want to thank you and just hope you would take in consideration um, these things that I've brought up. Ms. Ryan, can we make a, a note of, of your concerns? We have an ordinance review committee that meets about uh, every month or every other month, and we will certainly address your, your concerns there. Okay. We certainly will. And I have a copy. That would of be great. This. If you would give it to the clerk. The, okay. Thank you so much. Thank we'll we'll you. look into it, and we will bring it up to the ordinance review committee. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. <laughs> I've got 6.05 and uh, we have a public hearing at 6.05 for the fiscal year 2018 and 2019 Town of Franklin budget and I'll declare the public hearing open and I've had uh, one person sign up for the uh, fiscal year and that's uh, Ms. Moore, Angela Moore. Good evening. I see that the town has decided to raise our taxes by over 14.3% this year. This is after um, raises of 4, 5, 6, 7, 8% um, over the course of the last um, 6 to 8 years. Um, we've had a couple years without raises, but those raises just keep coming. Um, I, I believe in the last 5 years this would be a total of 8 cents, which sounds small, 8 cents, 8 pennies. But when we look at it in comparison to what our taxes were several years ago of, I think, 24 cents on the dollar, it is a significant raise. Uh, we're talking about a 33% raise if you're looking at it over the last few years. Um, so a four cent raise, just to be clear, is over 14.3% raise in taxes. <coughs> I know that it's difficult to cut the budget, and I know that there, there are a lot of projects that everyone wants to do, but the reality is, is that we are in a huge amount of debt, millions, over, I think, $12 million in debt. We pay over $225,000 a year, almost the amount of that four cent tax raise, in interest. Just to be clear, that money's not going to services, that money's not going to personnel, it's not going to concrete assets. It is going to interest. We have to stop taking on new projects. We have to stop taking on pet projects. We have to start looking at any place that we can cut. Um, we've got lots of fun tourism projects that everybody seems to love. And, and I'll be honest, there's a few of them that I've enjoyed over the years. But the reality is, is that those things need to be taken off of the town's budget. And if the TDA would like to continue them, they may. If the county's tourism group would also like to continue them, they may. The reality is, is most of these events are attended not mainly by the people who live in the town, but mainly by the people who live in the county and not the town. All of us live in the county. We pay county taxes. Uh, the idea that because it's inside the Franklin sit town limits that it has to come out of the Franklin budget is unreasonable. If it is something for the sole purpose of entertainment and tourism, then it needs to come out of our budget and go to the tourism development groups. Um, this would include picking on the square, bathrooms for picking on the square. This would include uh, the Chamber of Commerce and fireworks. Um, these are all nice programs, um, uh, including economic development, festivals, those types of things. We can cut that 14% if we're willing to make some hard choices. In addition to that, if we wanted to cut further, um, you know, it's not a it's not a popular thing. It's, it's something I hate to think about because I know a lot of people who work here and I like a lot of people who work here. But the town consistently gives two percent cost of living raises. I think there might have been one year they didn't or did a little bit lower. But this adds up, and the reality is, is the private businesses in this area aren't giving those costs of living raises. Um, the town also pays for dental insurance for its employees, something that um, we don't see either in. Um, private businesses, or if you'd like to compare apples to apples, you can compare them to North Carolina teachers. We have lots and lots of those. The Macon County School System is one of the biggest employers in the county. Um, they do not get um, any help with their dental insurance from the state, 
and they do, I think they went seven years without a cost of living raise. They get, I think, raises for when they've been employees for X amount of time because of their experience, but that is all. Um, in addition, the town's offering longevity. While I know that there have been a few select positions that we have had a high turnover in, the reality is that the majority of the town positions do not have a problem with turnover. That longevity pay is not going to improve the turnover rate and the few administrative positions that do have difficulty with turnover. It is simply, I think, a feel-good thing because um, you know the people who work here, you like them, you care about them, you know, you want to give them more compensation, I understand that, but we have to run this town like a business and not uh, like a charity, um, which brings me secondly to the nonprofit funding. Um, I say it every year. Nonprofits are wonderful. We have some fantastic ones in our town, but that is a big chunk of money that is not going to infrastructure. It is being taken from the citizens here, and it is being re redistributed by you. I don't get a say in where my money is donated to. I don't get a say if I want to donate money. It is taken from me without my permission, <laughs> and you give it to a charity of your choice. Um, and that is, that is just not okay. I would really encourage you guys to consider taking that off, particularly in light of the fact that you can't pay your bills without raising taxes, 14.3%. <laughs> so, um, you know, um, in, in addition to this, we, I've seen some new charges on there. I noticed that there was $6,000 allotted to council community relations in one place, and then another thousand in another, as well as $1,000 to employee relations. Um, I guess it sounds good, it sounds fun, <laughs> um, but I, I don't know that this is the type of spending we need to be seeing in light of the fact that the money situation and the debt is so out of hand that we have to raise taxes 14.3%. Um, and uh, I would just encourage you as you discuss the budget to not discuss a four cent increase. Discuss a 14 plus percent increase because that's gonna drive that point home. It's gonna remind you what you're putting on the people and the citizens here. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Okay, that's the only person I have signed up for the public hearing uh, on the budget. Yes, ma'am. Well, I didn't know where to sign up. But I okay, to come, come right ahead. If you would, please state your name. Tamara Zwinak. Zwinak? Okay. Tamara Zwinak, Z-W-I-N-A-K. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon. And thank you for allowing this public comment. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> governments need money from the public to support themselves. Governments are not a business. Governments are funded by the public, and the money should go to provide public services uh, that are needed. So we do have to have taxes. I am a retired government employee, so uh, and I was in a uh, protected longevity position, and I was recruited based on that because they couldn't get people for the position. So there are sometimes situations where it's hard to recruit and keep people, and that's a necessity also. Um, now, I just wanted to ask one question. Is this a sales tax or is this a property tax increase? A property tax. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So since it's a property tax increase, I don't know at the city level, if you have these waivers for seniors on property tax, that would be one thing I would suggest cutting. If you want, I'm a senior also, if you want to give seniors a tax break, okay, on property taxes, you can do that based on income, right? You can set it up where you have a certain income limit, you know, we'll give you a break on your taxes, perhaps, mm -hmm. but I think that there are a lot of seniors that can afford to pay property taxes. And why do I say that? Because I have found that the services to our children in our schools are not up to par. So these are things we have to balance. If we can't provide sort of AP classes or other curriculum to students, you know, we have to take that into consideration. We can't just give a blanket tax break to a group of people. So that's one thing I'd say. I think you also need to have a sales tax, okay? I, 
I came from a city that had a lot of taxes, mm -hmm. you know, at every possible level in the state, you know, California, they tax you everywhere, come and go. Um, so you might want to have a sales tax, a city sales tax. That's something else you can consider. Um, but as far as health care costs, that's, I think, one of your biggest line items. Okay, you might consider limiting the number of dependents that can be covered. You might eliminate dependent coverage entirely and just provide the coverage to employees and offer a plan where they can buy in coverage at a certain rate. But when I was working for the state of California, we had to pay 50% of our health care. It was not covered 100%. That's a big chunk of money out of the paycheck, about one week of pay just to cover the health insurance premium. Premiums are out of control. So you really have to negotiate a good rate. And I used to work for an insurance company. You have to negotiate a good rate with the insurance companies. You might want to have, well, we got rid of managed care. That was an evil word. Everybody hated that. <laughs> Some people probably want to kill you if you mentioned that word. But I worked for one of those companies that had to review these plans. Um, so you really want to get that under control. Um, and one, those are some of the ways you can do it. Make employees pay a share of the cost. Do you pay 100% of the policy right now? City covers 100% for employees? Employees only. But yeah, for employees. dependents and everyone else, there's no Yeah, so you change that for employees. They're going to have to kick in you know, 20% or whatever. That's the suggestion I can make. Um, because we've got to look at the future and really, if somebody says you're in debt, I haven't looked at the budget, I don't know if you're in debt or not, but if you want to stay fiscally sound, if you're not in debt, you want to stay out of debt. And healthcare costs are not going to go down. They're only going to go up. So those are some of the suggestions I have, and I'm in full support of the property tax. Thank you, ma'am. One, one thing uh, uh, is, is about uh, North Carolina, we're basically municipalities are creatures of the legislature and we can't do a lot of what you have just suggested because we are Dillon Rules uh, state, one of the, the few and uh, there, there is a possibility, possibility we could impose a quarter inch sales tax but that's not a whole lot but you'd have to go to the legislature and hold a referendum here and all that but okay. uh, well, we, that's just an idea. These are some things to think about. Right. Thank you for that information. But healthcare costs are those under your oh. control? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to say that um, seniors have to pay. Uh, it, yeah. it is income based. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's good. It's not just a blanket waiver yeah. then, because I read somewhere. Yeah. I started thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Blanket waiver. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got to provide lunches at school for kids. However, if uh, if. Some someday just come on by. And we'll we'll talk about it. And, uh, we'd be glad to hear you out on it. Certainly would. Yeah, well, you're doing a hard job. It's very difficult. You have a lot of people that are for, a lot of people that are against what you're doing, and it's not easy being a politician nowadays. That's what's called democracy. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Anybody else on the public comment on the budget? A public hearing. If not, I'll declare with a motion that we declare it closed. Motion to close the public hearing. Okay, second? All right, all in favor. Okay. The next item is a public hearing uh, for regulation of the placement of utilities. Uh, so I'll declare that public hearing open. Did anyone want to speak to that? Dr. Harris, did you you're on the planning board were you here to were you here to speak to that? No, I wasn't. Oh, okay. Well I don't have anybody signed up to speak to that. So I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing for lack of uh, anybody speaking. Okay, I have a motion. Second? I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Public hearing closed. Mm -hmm. And nobody else was signed up for the public session. So the next item is where I've asked to move them up on the agenda. Uh, the first one is, and we have uh, two folks here. Uh, Jeff Stevens with Prussian Presbyterian Church and I forgot the name. Brian. Brian, my Marine buddy back there, okay. So if y'all would just come up, I, uh, I'll declare this, I'll ace the board for a 
of support of the proclamation of support for homeless veterans. This is a project that the First Presbyterian Church and the ABCMM of uh, Asheville is doing. And uh, it is to encourage the town of Franklin to offer a proclamation that the week of 9 September 2018 be set aside as a week of support for our homeless veterans. Do I hear a motion to adopt the proclamation? I'll make a motion. The second? All in favor? Okay. Jeff, I will sign it and I'll send it down to the clerk who will attest to it and give you guys. Uh, did you have anything you'd like to add? No, just uh, Mr. Mayor, appreciate the town's support. Thank you very much. Well, thank you guys. We appreciate y'all. So, and anytime we can do something, just let us know. Thank you. We'll pass that down to Travis, please. The next uh, is a resolution, resolution in honor of Dr. William O. McLarney. I think there's some folks here for that. Kathy, I think you're here. There's several with me. They're just invisible. <laughs> Pardon? Are they invisible? Yeah. What happened to them? All right. Uh, I'll read this proclamation, and then I'll sign it. Okay. And uh, Whereas in 1990, with the support of the Tennessee Valley Authority, Bill McClarney launched the Little Tennessee Aquatic Biomonitoring Program, which has measured the health of the river and its principal tributaries for 28 years and has served to engage and educate over 1,000 individual volunteers while monitoring the health of the diverse fish communities native to this watershed. And whereas in the autumn of 1993, Bill organized the first Little Tennessee Watershed Conference, which for the first time brought together local officials, natural resource agency personnel, nonprofits, farmers, sportsmen, biologists, conservationists, historians, and local residents to discuss the unique biological diversity, water quality, and management issues associated with the Little Tennessee River and its watershed and Whereas Bill was instrumental in founding the Little Tennessee Sea Watershed Association in 1995 with the mission to conserve the water quality and habitat of the upper Little Tennessee River and its tributary streams, and whereas Bill was also instrumental in founding the Land Trust of the Little Tennessee, of the Little Tennessee in 1997, now it's known as Main Spring Conservative Trust, with the mission to conserve the waters, forests, farms, and heritage of the Upper Little Tennessee watershed and beyond. And whereas Bill's study of the federally listed fish, the spot fin chub, led to the first evidence of the rich biotic interchange between the Little Tennessee River and its tributaries, thus raising the understanding of the importance of protecting smaller tributary streams. And whereas Bill has worked tirelessly as an advocate for the health of the Little Tennessee River, which has led both to improvements in wastewater treatment permits in the river's headwaters in Georgia, as well as to the permanent conservation of the Needmore Tract at the lower end of the valley, and whereas through his three decades of work with natural resource professionals, with citizen scientists, and with others in this region, Bill has raised the profile of the Upper Little Tennessee River as the most intact, biologically diverse, and beautiful river in the southern Blue Ridge Mountains. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Forward Franklin, together with his partners in the planning of the Macon County Water Forum, do hereby express their great appreciation for the exceptional and dedicated service of Dr. William O. McClarney in protecting the integrity of the upper Little Tennessee River and its watershed for the benefit of future generations who will enjoy the beauty, the biological diversity, and the intact nature of the river. Okay. And if no if, if you've ever gone out fish sampling with Dr. McClarney, you have really missed something, I will tell you that. It is quite an expedition. So I'll entertain a motion. Um, you, you want to make the motion, okay? <laughs> Whatever I want. All right, you're going to make the motion to make adopt the, motion the uh, resolution. resolution. Yes, indeed. In a second. All in favor. All right. Kathy, I'm going to sign it here and pass it down to Travis. And Travis will uh, attest to it. Go back and read this. 
Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Our best to uh, Dr. McLarney. We will get news of this at the water conference on the 16th. So it's <laughs> He's probably going to see it in the press before <laughs> then. I'm sorry. Maybe out. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I guess we're down to uh, 8A, which is the board action on fiscal year 2018-2019 town of Franklin budget. Okay. Council members. To start the discussion. Adam, All right. Maybe Adam has something to say. Okay, Adam. <clears throat> um, I mean, I think there's. You guys had a big conversation the other day, and some of us have talked independently. Uh, I do think. I do think a tax increase is kind of a scary thing, but at the same time, I think we all look at the same budget. We all know what money is where and where it's got to go. The projects are. And for those projects and some of those necessary, I don't think they'll, in the same vein as insurance doesn't get cheaper, those projects don't get cheaper, the labor doesn't get cheaper, the materials don't get cheaper. Um, so, not to move without a little hesitancy, but I, I think I'm uh, pretty firmly in support of this with a uh, keen eye on what we do with it and how we address it in the next year or two. Yeah, I think we have a couple of things that we may need to hash out among the board about maybe taken away or further discussion okay anybody else I will say I will say that I am uh, I missed my opportunity the other day to agree with Mr. Culpepper um, I, I would like to at least look very heavily at the nonprofit funding pool okay and how we if we can't deal with that this year that's fine I, I get that no no, no there's, there's going to be a lot of angles to it but uh, okay it is something that I don't know is uh, utilized in the most uh, impactful way. I don't know that it's used necessarily in the vein or the spirit in which it was meant to be used sometimes. So. And I, I have looked into this a little bit as well and there is concern about some of the legalities of the non-profit funding pool. Uh, that's been a lot of towns have, have, have no longer do this non-profit funding pool. Uh, so that might be something that we want to consider before we adopt the budget. Of, of taking out or leaving in. So, uh, yes, Joe. Uh, for, for the most part, I'm comfortable enough with it. I appreciate Angela's uh, comments because it, it does it <clears throat> make you think. Uh, of, I'm okay with, let's say, picking. Because I can look at it as economic development. Those folks, maybe they're going to have a buy or something, maybe they'll see a store, whatever. I'm okay with interest because you can't build big things by paying it out of your back pocket. And you need, so I'm okay with cost of living raises. I'm okay with most everything that we do. I have a little angst about the nonprofit because that is absolutely an opportunity for us to choose what the citizens put their money towards. And so that's kind of, I mean, I've gone, obviously I've been involved in a lot, raising my hand on budgets with the nonprofits. I'm not saying it's a deal buster this year, but I do hear the, I do see the other side of it. Yes, Barbara. Yeah, I think I think we should go ahead this year with it. I mean, it's getting very close to the time that we would be, you know, people would be submitting their requests, and they may be hoping, planning on that money. But I think we should, re, you know, look at it really hard in the future. I don't have a philosophical problem with it because it seems to me they're nonprofits if they're fulfilling a civic purpose that furthers the town of Franklin. They can often do it far cheaper. I mean, they're using volunteer labor and other donations, and so you get more bang for your buck than we could possibly do if we wanted to do the same thing. But we need to look and make sure that there's a way to be, you know, certain that everyone is really meeting that standard. Um, and um, I mean, we've we've got a good system. I mean, we've tried really hard to make sure that it's, you know, everything is just what we want, but. It's worth looking at again. I'm open minded about it. <clears throat> Just so I could say something. Yes, um, philosophically, I guess, I don't think there was much we could do 
to not have a tax increase other than start working much earlier on some pretty drastic cuts. I think four cents is hefty. Um, I think we need to formulate and think more long term about the funding for what we do as a town. How do we get ourselves on more stable footing? How do we um, repopulate the general fund um, from people who are getting services outside of the corporate limits? How do we go about actually getting the tax base from the people that we serve from the people that we serve? Um, that's a conversation we need to have in the future. Uh, we should not just look to tax increases as a last minute. Hey, you know, we don't have enough money. We're going to have to do something about it. Uh, strategic thinking, long term, how do we get the town on paper, how do we get the town's tax base to reflect what the town actually does? And that's a conversation we need to look at before the next budget session starts. Broken. Okay, anything else that anybody wants to... Yes, I'll ma'am. just leave this up to the board about how to handle. I know that I'm. We've already adopted the agenda, and that I'm on the bottom about the restroom. Mm-hmm. But it might be better if we did it now okay. to put it in with sure. that. And I've got a few little handouts, and I had to kind of write out because sometimes I tend to get off kilter with what I'm saying. So. Um, I know that at the, uh, but it, it's the whole thing, the two sections. Oh, and I'll, let's see, is that it? That's it. So what I wanted to say was, um, and I'll go over this real quick. When we had our May 15th budget meeting, uh, we discussed the bathroom issue for the upcoming budget year regarding town events. At that time, the town of Franklin had been put on notice through the county of Macon that pursuant to the senior resident Superior Court Judge William Coward, that the bathrooms at the Macon County Courthouse would not be available for after hours use for any town events. Um, And the senior resident Superior Court Judge, under the authority and obligation of his office, felt there were security concerns at the Macon County Courthouse during after hours use of the restrooms. So at that budget meeting, we only had the two options on the table. We could rent portable toilets for each event or we put in the budget to buy a large, much nicer portable toilet trailer at a cost of $23,000. But we would be able to use it at various events. At that time, we were still under the impression that the courthouse bathrooms could not be utilized for any after-hours events. And it seemed to me that there was a consensus that we were looking for a more permanent solution that we could either find some county property or private property that we could build restrooms. So uh, there was a lot of discussion about that that night. And when I left the meeting that night, it crossed my mind that we talked about the county having the possibility, but that no one had ever reached out to anybody at the county. So I've worked quite a bit and am currently working with Macon County Commissioner Ronnie Bill on some substance abuse issues and have a good working relationship with him. And I spoke with him the next day on Wednesday to see if there were any options. Um, at that time, Commissioner Bill stated that he would call the Honorable William Coward and that he would talk to the County Manager, Derek Rowland, and get back to me. On Thursday, May the 17th, Commissioner Bill called me and informed me that the Honorable William Coward also felt that portable restrooms might not be the best solution and that he would allow the town to use the restrooms for after-hour events subject to inspection and recommendations by the Macon County Sheriff, the County Maintenance Supervisor, and the County Manager. I know there's in your packet, there's the email that was sent out by County Manager Derek Rowland to our Town Manager Summer Woodard. 
Um, I was very pleased at the judge and the county's willingness to help the town, and they helped in a very quick manner. As a matter of fact, they helped so quick that we could have already been using those facilities, but it required further discussion by the board. Um, I never intended to skirt the responsibility. It was a board's decision, but I just merely reached out to uh, County Commissioner Bill. Um, now, I was very adamant at our budget meeting that of the two solutions that we needed, the, not the portable restrooms, but probably the uh, portable trailer, but at this time, I wanted to bring it back up to discussion because we didn't have that option on the table. I personally called Mr. Coward's, Honorable William Coward's office on Friday and spoke to uh, his secretary, Jane. She assured me that this was the agreement that was made with the county on behalf of the town. Uh, one of the things, we've got figures from local businesses that we can rent the portable toilets for $160.13 for each picking on the square. I emailed uh, town manager uh, Summer Woodard last week for some other information regarding those expenses. And um, the portable toilets have to be delivered on Friday before picking. Um, so therefore, if there's a rain-out event, the town would still bear the cost of $160.13. We all know that picking is sometimes canceled on Saturday afternoon, maybe as late as 4 or 5 o'clock. Uh, the portable toilets would be picked back up on Monday. If it's a holiday, they would be picked up on Tuesday. So the cost of the courthouse restrooms is a one-time $150 maintenance fee for some things that were to be done at the courthouse. We currently have a part-time Franklin police officer that works outside during picking on the square. Uh, Judge Coward had asked that a Franklin police officer be placed inside the building uh, not to search anyone or bother them in any way, but merely do some safety precautions inside the building. Um, that police officer currently is already working outside the building at a cost of $56 uh, per night. So if we took that officer and put her inside the building, because it's just been a very short time that we've had any police presence outside at Picking on the Square, for many years, there was no police presence uh, until just uh, probably the last two or three years. So I am bringing this up for discussion tonight because of the fact that we can pay $160.13 each week, whether it rains or not, for picking on the square or any event, or we could... Uh, pay the county the uh, one-time fee of $150 and uh, actually have no further expense if we place that officer inside the building. And I went back and looked at some things and as we discuss the, this issue, I would ask that we not mention the specifics about the deficient security at the courthouse because Judge Coward has stated in the past that the publicity of those details only increases the chance that someone could take advantage or encourage some act of violence. So I would just like to leave the specifics out about what their concerns were. That's all I've got. No cleaning fee. No cleaning fee. No okay. So we got. If I if I may bring a couple of things. Uh, uh, there's been a police presence up there for years. My uh, father worked there for many years, and he yes, was the only one there, so I can yeah, say that, that with a hard-known fact, <laughs> that he was there with no police I, presence. I go up there almost every Saturday and half for years, well, and the I, police are there. I hard. tend to, we disagree on that I issue. I know we do. I know <laughs> so we that's do. fine. Uh, just let me mention a couple of things about the portable toilet. Uh, we're talking $23,000. And we've got to have a town employee to haul it, take care of it, store it. Now, 
you can't just call an employee back to work an hour or two. You've got to guarantee them that you're going to get at least four hours overtime. Your maintenance on to do that with the $23,000 toilet is going to be about $8,000 a year to run that thing. You've got to store it, you've got to have tax, title, and an employee to take care of it. And that's what we're talking about, $23,000 plus what hasn't come up before the board yet, about an $8,000 a year in personnel, storage, cleaning, and all like that. Now, we had, for two, the past two kickings, we've had porter jobs. I have talked and I made an announcement that we did not have the use of the courthouse at this time, and I got no complaints, none whatsoever. The, the restrooms were open here in the town building, in the town hall, and we had uh, a huge, huge crowd. Relayer for Life used the Porta Johns the other night, no complaints. The uh, uh, I went down to the Lazy Hiker, uh, just down there to see how everybody was, and they had a Porta John. You go to musical events, you go to NASCAR, you go to just about anything, you're going to find Porta Johns. It's their problem. The company, they come get them and they were gone. They were gone Monday morning, uh, Sunday morning. No, they don't deliver. They do not pick up on the weekend. They, they pick up on Monday. They just no, they were, they were gone yesterday afternoon. Mr. Mayor and Council, if I may, I think the only reason they were gone yesterday was because of the Relay for Life event. Yeah. And they got ours at the same time. Did they? Okay. But the yes. prior weekend, they were gone on Tuesday that that's, morning. That's correct. The morning that's correct. Day. We had a, a little glitch, but we got that all straightened out. That's that's all water over the dam. But the Porta Johns work very well. Not everybody at Pickens is going to be using a, a, a restroom at the same time. But it is working, it has worked very well, uh, and we can use them for any kind of special event. And, and talking about $23,000, we need that money for some things. I just sent around a picture of one of the trucks that our public works have to drive. And this is not the worst one. It's got 140,000 miles on it, it's a 2000 model, and I just cannot see spending $23,000 plus about $8,000 a year to maintain a portable toilet which is not used every day. Now, I'm open well, my to... my option that is the third option on the table, I did not specifically raise the issue of the trailer. I mm -hmm. raised the issue of the yeah. uh, the free county bathrooms every mm -hmm. weekend. Yes, sir. We're getting... need to get some order here. <laughs> We've gotten, gotten a little away from our voting on our budget. But if there's a, given what Dinah has presented, if there is any thought whatsoever <clears throat> that what it would be superior to go with this, for picking on the square events, what Dinah has suggested, uh, since we don't have to pay the $50 or 60 every week for a cleaning fee plus all of that, versus Porta Johns, which might get delivered on Friday, not picked up to Monday, who knows what gets used when they're not, when they're just sitting there. They're otherwise. locked. They're locked. Those, that's great. Okay. Though, I mean, that's no, that's not even a, in my opinion, <clears throat> that's a very clear choice uh, to go the way that you're talking about. Now, regarding very briefly the trailer, I am very much never heard an $8,000 figure. I don't know where it came from. I certainly would want to challenge it. I know the mayor, whenever he first had our budget meeting and he took the opportunity to read out what he wanted, the trailer was in his request at that time whenever you asked for the 4% raise. We gave the 4% raise. Now, didn't give it yet. We talked about it. Now, all of a sudden, coming up with some numbers that I don't believe. But we're here to get back, in my opinion, to get back focused on whether or not we want to adopt the budget as we kind of have it on paper. But Donna's, Donna's opinion there as between those two choices, I don't think it's a choice at all. Well, let me ask you this. Did the judge say that the police officer had to be in the building? Police officer can be in the building. They're not to, they don't. Right. All they do is occasionally search, but of course there's one entrance to the building. The police officer can 
walk outside the building, they don't have to physically... I mean, if somebody went in, they would, of course, see them. But uh, they are to spend more time inside the building than they are what, out. What you're doing then is taking the law enforcement away from what it's deserved, what it, what it is supposed to be, and that's to be out there with the crowd. Well, as and I said, my father worked that picking for me. Let, let me finish. I'm Just let me finish. finish. Well, I'm letting you finish. Go I ahead. asked my father this weekend. Mm -hmm. I said, and I was at picking many of those years. I asked him this weekend, I said, how many years did you work picking on the square? And he said, oh, probably 20. I said, do you have any police officers? Never had any police officers. If I needed any help, I called them. That's right. And that was, but that's, that's, I'm just saying I'm not telling a mistruth when I said there was no well, police there. Picking on the square has grown exponentially. And uh, I'll get right with you. And I will not, I cannot as the mayor say anything about putting a highly trained police officer to guard two county bathrooms. It's still when they have gone through so 706 months of training to be a sworn officer, who in this room would want to tell a police officer to go guard a bathroom? Any of you would? I, you probably would. Yes. Given the choice, given the two, given it's the choice, right, yeah. you're going to have to. You're going to have security. to pay them time. Well, it's security it's for the who? same. It's for the courthouse. It, it's it's the a board house. decision. Let's if it's there's the any further house. discussion. In those yeah. twenty, in those twenty years, can they point to one incident? They don't have to. The judge has the control yes, over sir. the courthouse. Uh, again, philosophically. Um, I am very hesitant to host an event where we have a uniformed officer on bathroom patrol. I have no qualms with an officer walking around the crowd, shaking hands, saying, hey, everybody, keep an order. Um, if we suspect or the judge suspects that the crowd at Pickin is dangerous enough that we have to station an officer watching people walk in and out of a restroom the entire time, we need to rethink that event. Did you read the email that I, the I, judge sent with his I, I just read everything that you just yeah. did. And I, no, I, it I, was I, in the package. I talked to the sheriff about it, too, and I, I've, I've, I've done a little bit of homework on this. But again, I think that, that having an officer sit in front of bathroom doors watching people go in and out, that's antithetical to what we're selling as a town. We're a community town. Come to our community event where we're having bluegrass music. I mean, having to have an officer sit and do bathroom duty seems... That's not our choice. Well, well, we, but, but we do have choices. I mean, if, if the judge will agree to have him walk around the crowd no. and go in and out every now and then, I think that's fine. The judge has made his decision. It now is our decision. It's not a... We're not running back and forth to the judge. The judge has made his decision, and it's our hands of portable toilets or the county restaurant. Well, you, you had mentioned he goes in and out, but he has to stay in more often than not. And it is because it's based upon the email that I said we wouldn't discuss. It's based on things that have happened in other courthouses that have caused... It's not that we think the picking on the square people are going to do something, but somebody could walk up that has nothing to do with picking. <clears throat> but if they could go into the bathroom and do it anyway because he's not physically right. in the restroom. Right. Let, me, let, me, let me ask one thing. That is a county building. How many employees does the sheriff have? Would the sheriff put one of his deputies outside? It's, it's the no, issue. No, no. On the, no the issue pay, that I raised is all that's what the offer on the table. That every, is the offer on the table. Every resident, Ms. Mashburn, of Franklin pays county taxes. I didn't make the rules. This is the Did rule. Did he specifically say it had to be a Franklin, he said a Franklin police, police officer? officer. I yes, would sir. not go for putting one of our officers out there guarding the bathroom when we can get Porter Johns and let this thing fly. So I would like to, well, there's further discussion. So. All right, go ahead with No, it. not me. Oh, Mr. Okay. McRae raised her hand. Yes, Mark. I was going to suggest that we vote on the budget mm -hmm. and that we just keep talking about this. I mean, 
Well, I don't want, and this is my thing. We can vote on the budget. I, I, it has, I just brought it up earlier. Yeah. But I don't want this to keep rocking for weeks and months. We're going to come back. It's pretty much out there that we need to make a decision we do of what we do. I think the mayor would agree. You either do it or you don't do it and not rock it along. So I'm of the opinion it needs to be decided because that is, I, that's why I wrote it out. I laid out every fact that was in there about what to do. All right, well, let me answer Mr. Collins' question about at the time that this came up in the budget meeting, I was not aware of some of what was going on. So I have taken it upon myself to look at what the overall costs are going to be to that portable restroom. Now, going back to the, uh, going back to the uh, county restrooms in the courthouse, I cannot see why we would pull an officer off of patrol in this town, which he's sworn to protect, to guard that bathroom. I cannot see it. And I understand the judge. I know a lot about security. Spent my, a lot of my career in law enforcement. But I don't know why any police officer worth his salt would want to even sit up there and guard a bathroom. I'm not going to be physically sitting you in You just front said of that I they said have to be in, in the, the building. Well, there is more to the building than the front door of a bathroom. But it's locked off. It's locked. They've locked got locked a big off. steel door that comes down, and you can't go beyond the restroom. Yes, sir, Mr. Coker. Thank you for the hard work. Yeah, and, and, I mean, yeah. And, and thank you to the county for really trying to put this together for us and help us out. But I don't know that we're going to get anywhere on it. But I mean, I, I, I sincerely thank you, and I think we do need to do something about it. Um, and, and sincere thanks to the county for working hard to try to help us. But I agree with Barbara. I think we should vote on the budget and do this as a separate issue. Well, this is still on the agenda. Oh, that's fine. I don't want it to another meeting. No, 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 she said she said this was taken the place. Okay, we need to do this. We need to do this. One other thing, I might could go along with this if it didn't have to be a sworn officer. If you had the part, I mean, it was the part time. There's a big difference. Well, no, it'd still be a sworn officer. And a sworn officer is very, very highly trained for a lot of things other than watching a bathroom door. People go in and out. Now, you can go ahead and vote. Yes, sir. Just one question. The only question I ask. Chief Adams, how do you think an officer would feel about that job? If somebody had to be reallocated for that to be part-time picking protection and part-time guarding that restaurant. Miss Woodard and I have discussed this. So I haven't discussed with officers. But Monday through Friday, the deputy sheriffs do not guard that bathroom. It's that is Friday. what they are in the process of right. doing. And that is why the judge, they do not. And that's why the, they're getting security and everything. I, the whole reason about the bathroom is you can't put cameras in the bathroom. Right. And what they, this actually happened in a courthouse in North Carolina where something happened at a weekend event that carried over into a, through the week. Um, it doesn't really matter if the county doesn't do it, if the judge orders that it has to happen on the weekend, then it has to happen. Right. So it's just a matter of if that happens, do we want to pay the 160.13 for the Port of Johns or do we want to do this? That's all that's out there. Uh, I feel like my, my mother or my wife would be offended if the officer had to come and check the bathroom after she came out. Well, they're not going to see that. They're going to go in and there are things they're going to check. They can actually go and have a table that's set inside. They don't have to even be known that they're up trying to search. And they're not to search them or do and just walk around. Uh, I think it's kind of getting carried a little more. It's, it's just that 
That's a yes. Yeah, that yeah, we, 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 if I may intervene real yes, quick. Please. Um, Chief Adams, yes, just, let's, let's take it a little step further. I think the council's asking the question, if it was a part-time officer who's sworn, would that be something you and I could work on if the board decided? Yes, we can work on it. Okay. Well, let me just Thank throw you. one thing out here right now. The problem was solved with the Porter Johns. We had this was came up. I, I mean, you, I have to say that even you said we need a more permanent solution, mm -hmm. and 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 it was brought up at that budget meeting. I don't see Porta Johns as solved in a future that okay, let's raise taxes and put Porta Johns out from now on. That's not why we're raising taxes. Well, but it My doesn't life. look real good to go from raising taxes and putting court well, how, how do you think the public's going to feel about seeing a sworn in uniform police officer of the Franklin Police Department who well, are sworn? They're probably going to think a lot because it's become such a big deal. Well, who made it a big deal? All I did was reach <laughs> out to somebody. Make a motion we adopt the budget as presented. I'll second. I'll third. We have a motion second. that we're adopting the budget as presented. All right. All in favor. All right. What does that leave us on I, this? I make a motion. Because the blankety blank uh, portable toilet at $23,000 is sitting in there, and I've got employees driving vehicles that are not safe to drive. We don't have to use the 23 for the porta potty. It's set aside. Well, it's in the port budget. Not as a bathroom trailer. It's, it's for a solution. It can go over to the. Okay. We could roll it in with next year's $23,000 for a potty and end up building a toilet with $46,000. Mm -hmm. It's just for a bathroom solution, not for anything specific. We, it was Chief, I think this would have to be a voluntary. We cannot order. I don't think an off duty officer to go sit at something like that because that's, that's not why not? Because it's that. not in the subject of his who was our police liaison? Me. Well then you take care of it, Dinah. <laughs> okay, we've we got didn't a motion. vote on that. All we voted I make was a the motion budget. I make a motion that henceforth, if given the choice between using the bathrooms at the courthouse with the police protection versus the porta potties that we use the bathrooms that it's cheaper and it's a better service to the public that's my motion it and, and any discussion any discussion i have discussion okay number two um your phrasing police protection that's what the devil's in the details if if we have an officer at picking that walks in and out checks on the bathrooms cool with that i am adamantly opposed to you walking into the foyer, which is not big, of the courthouse, and there'd be an officer sitting there for the entire time during picking. If you can go back and forth and out and look at the crowd, patrol, looking for bad guys, go into the bathroom, out, in, I'm cool with it. If he has to sit there the entire time, I'm against it. Anytime. I will say this. I'm, I'm retired from law enforcement. And I don't think y'all have any idea what this board is going to do to the morale of our police department by thinking that this is a real high thing on that, that need to be done and putting a sworn police officer out there because I have been going to picking for years too, Ms. Bashman. I haven't seen you up there in the last couple of years. I went because I don't go in the last few right. years. I guess I went several years when you weren't there. Well, I was up there with your dad, and he was. Uh, I see, he was still sworn. It doesn't time. matter when I've been to picking. You keep bringing that up I, in the public about me not going. To I pick do it. because I went out and 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 basically did a poll of the people that were picking. And they knew why I was there and what I was up to, and I haven't heard any complaints about the portage johns And it works, well, and it's a whole lot cheaper than you buying. saying that about me not doing. going to pick it. Uh, all I did was, and let me just say, all I did was reach out. I didn't say, can we use the county bathrooms? That was not what I reached out. I said, is there possibly any county property that adjoins there that we might could use? Well, did the county ever tell us they were closing? The way I found out was one night that they were locked. We had not been given any. The county had not told us. 
that they were going to lock and that we would no longer be able to use them. But we worked it out by having hours open. But okay, we've got a motion on the floor to adopt the budget as presented. We, we, we did. Yeah, we did. All voted. Okay. Well, I guess that takes care of. No, that. There was a motion on the floor to use the bathrooms in the courthouse for, rather than the porta johns for the uh, picking on the square. Uh, are you going to put that in there that uh, by I utilizing... made my motion, Your Honor. I made my motion. Are you putting in there that it will be guarded by a Franklin sworn police officer? It will be in conformance with the requirements by the Honorable William Coward Superior well, Court Judge presiding. What is that requirement? The requirement that it that be a sworn police officer of the Franklin Police Department. Yes, and we yes, discussed okay. the Franklin right. part-time office. Okay, all in favor of using the county bathrooms and having a sworn police officer of the Franklin Police Department guard the bathroom. I guess that's the motion. Not guard the bathroom. Well, what are they doing up there? They're doing it. Joe's motion was in accordance with Judge William Coward's order not to guard the bathroom. Am I correct? That's Joe? correct. That's correct. And we can go on it and do it for now. If it turns out there's some reason in the future to revisit it, you always can. Hell, it's just bathrooms. Uh, that's my motion. It's not something permanent. It's at least a try. Right. If, if, if I may digress, we haven't actually seen Judge Coward's order. We've seen he that. He has not written an order. That's it's why not I call, a written order? Okay. He, that's why I call myself. He doesn't have to enter an order. I worked for the court system for many years. The Superior Court judge has authority over that, and I think Joe will tell you. I'm not disagreeing. And, and that's why I call. It he hasn't a, actually written an order, so we could ask him if, a, if an officer could go in and out mm -hmm. and walk through the crowd, go back in, out, in the crowd, not just sit in potty patrol. I'd like to ask him that. If, you may ask him. I have done my part. <laughs> Can I suggest that maybe we try it one time and see if it if it's onerous? See if see if it works. Um, Would you like to try it this weekend? Is that so possible? We can get it started if that's a little. Bit we'll make it work wherever you decide. I would definitely like to try it. I would, I, say I would that rather out. try it before it's we without decide. Without losing the opportunity to save that much money after sitting here raising taxes, I would hate to not try. It. Yeah. So, I guess I'll second Joe's motion. Okay, all in favor. All right, I've got, I've got four and two. Okay, board action on regulation for the placement of utilities. Anybody want to discuss this matter? If not, was was Justin going to present? Was Justin, Mr. Setzer. Good evening, Council and Mayor. Um, the report you have is a text amendment to UDO that um, planning board been working on for a couple months now. Um, it's a, a amendment to section uh, 152. 052 and 053 for uh, the placement of uh, underground utilities. Um, that was mine. This, um, you can, in your package, you'll see the, uh, the approved draft with the finding of facts and the consistency of the statement from the planning board um, that they recommended approval on. Um, what this sense does is just setting some guidelines in our, our UDO on placement utilities, water, sewer, power, phone, cable, so on, to be uh, under underground. I mean, obviously, some are automatically going to be underground. They're not underground sewer or anything, but to put it all in there. Um, but for new construction, so somebody build a new house, they have, instead of having power lines, they, put, they bury it to their house, which is more effective and uh, safety for Duke in the long run and have less outages. So uh, it was just putting this in um, writing for moving forward. Um, I've also, a planning board had some questions of reaching out that, you know, was Duke doing this currently? And they were currently doing this in all, all cases except for some rare cases. So um, 
haven't found any issue moving forward with this type okay. of uh, requirement. Uh, one quick question. As we do these uh, placement of utilities, and maybe you said it, you may have missed it, are we putting dark fiber in at the same time? Um, there's no requirement to make anybody put fiber in. No, I know. Um, obviously, sometimes if there's like a major subdivision, you know, if we're coming mm -hmm. through, uh, sometimes conversations, maybe urge the developer to put some fiber in the ground or cable and bury some, so there's more. Yeah. Services down the road, you know, yeah. planning for the future. So. so a lot of towns are putting dark fiber in, and uh, it's a lot cheaper than having to go back and put it in when they light it up. So I was just curious if they might be, if we might talk to people and not tell them they have to, but request that they put dark fiber in at the same yeah. time. And we can look at that, I think. Okay. And just so you know, there is there is verbiage in here that if there is some unseen circumstance where somebody is doing um, like an addition, and you know, to a house or something, that uh, my office I have the authority in this to I can waive it if it's something that's going to be too much of a burden. That we can you know leave it the traditional way. So there is that built into it. Okay. Anybody else want to? Yes, sir, Mr. Cooper. Um, how did uh, representatives from Dig Power feel about this? Um, they, I didn't get, I didn't really hear anything negative. From the ones I talked to, because they said virtually they, you're all new development of doing this almost virtually now. Um, um, so the only time we really see any issues is if it's like a long, somebody's got like a really long driveway. You're not going to see that much in town because. You're a lot more dense, you know, out in the county, which is it would be out in the county, except in our ETJ. Um, but they said virtually it's like 99% is doing this now. So. And they pay for underground for a certain distance, right? Yes. they'll. I think it's up to about 200 feet they'll pay. It's the same cost as going overhead. Um, if you get over 200 feet, then you have to... Over 200 feet, then you would have to pay some costs. Or if they run into some issues, like it's a lot of rock or something, um, there might be a charge to do. But, but a homeowner, a business owner, a landowner could come to you and say, hey, this is not possible to bury underground. What can we do? Yeah, and then I can, if, it, if they give it good reasons, then I can uh, wait and go more to the traditional or the poles or so on. Okay. So, Any other? Yes, ma'am. You have a question? No, I just, do we have to vote on it? Vote on this, right? Yeah, right. Just vote on it. It's, uh, vote it's presented. Now right, you have a motion on the floor. Second. Second. All in favor. Okay. Next item is a street closing request for the Arts Council. Madam Manager? Yes, Mr. Mayor and Council, what you have before you tonight is a street closing request for Ola Street on Friday, June the 29th for a two-hour concert. Um, they're actually requesting to close the street, though, from 6.30 to 10.30. What street? Um, Owl Street. Motion will allow. Second. Okay, all in favor. Okay. For the Unified Development Ordinance Text Amendment to the Town Planning Board. Mr. Setzer, you're back, sir. Yeah, um, this is one that's been um, kind of, when we adopted our Bachwalk Franklin plan, I attached it in your packet. If you see uh, on the little attachment, there was item number 11. One of the items they recommended was in our UDO under section uh, 152098I5, um, we have right now a requirement for sidewalks to be a four foot sidewalk and the ADA minimum requirement for sidewalks to be built is five feet. So this, what this text amendment we're proposing to send to the plan board is for them to review changing that text from since four feet to five foot to meet ADA requirements and go with our UDO. That's for new construction? New construction. Not yet. Digging out and replacing what's already there. No, not dig out anything. Now, if we had a section of sidewalk that we yes. was needing to replace, then we would we would go back to the five foot, but not. But it's, it's, um, what if it's only three and a half foot? 
Um, is that covered in this, or is that just a bad question? Um, we'd have to really look at it case by case. I would think it would need to be five feet, um, so it's so we're meeting ADA as well. Um, Plan of working. And we have some. You have to walk yeah. single file on. Yeah, that extra foot makes <laughs> such an incredible difference. Just in how safe you feel walking on a sidewalk, you wouldn't believe what twelve, what difference twelve inches will make. Okay. All right, we'll uh, entertain a motion to. I move that we forward this to the planning board. <laughs> okay, that's what I was going to suggest. Okay, all in favor? Okay. Discussion on street lights, Madam Manager and uh, Mr. Moore. Mr. Chair, Council, I'll let um, Engineer Mr. Moore discuss this topic. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, County Council. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so what you have in front of you is the uh, NCDOT um, electrical system uh, conduit layout for the Town Bridge, Project B5125. Uh, they approached us about, they are casting conduit into the bridge for street lights. Um, and what they have reached out to us to do, if we would like that, to go ahead and set the anchor bolts in the bridge. Um, the current layout right now has six street lights, one on either end and two in the middle uh, for the project. I reached out to Duke Power and what we were looking at is something very similar to Main Street, a decorative style light um, at a cost of roughly $50 each per lot. Per month? Per, per month. month. Mm -hmm. Yes. So $300. $300 per month, roughly. He basically, we have, it might vary a couple dollars, but that's very close. And it's modern technology, LED? All or? LED, yep. Did you say it was like um, town? They'll, they'll, they'll be very yeah. similar to the decorative style black lights that up I've here. I've always thought those look so nice. And th these will actually be a little broader since they are LED, you know, modern, never have to, they'll probably last forever out with all of us. You know, that's a, that's a pretty good payment. Realistically, do we have any options? Um, we have, the biggest thing is we have to give Duke Power some sort of, I, I was talking to them and whether we want to do all six, three, middle ones, I mean, the cost is what it is. That's we have no option on that. That includes the pole. It, setup, that's everything. everything. That yeah. is, we, but we're paying three hundred thirty-six hundred dollars a year in perpetuity yes. for bridge lights. Yes, yes. Mr. Green Council, if I may as well. Um, one of the main reasons too, I do in the town wanted to look at lighting at this particular area on the bridge is, if the council remembers, we did the council did invest um, a significant amount of money for that additional footpath. So the more lighting down there, it would encourage that as well for pedestrian traffic and these things. No, I think the extra cost is because we're having to buy the poles too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's everything yeah. included. Definitely a safety. <laughs> Without the light on. Yeah. Um, and the greenway, you know, will utilize the path, the path up there, so we would probably get lots of dust traffic up there. So a lighted intersection would definitely be something that yeah. I push the council towards having. Okay. Do we have to vote on it? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Any qu any further questions? I'll entertain the motion. That then. is that is the Greenway. So mm -hmm. I'll make a motion mm -hmm. to adopt that. All right, is that Second. just for all clear? That's all six slides mm -hmm. that the council would mm -hmm. like yes. to move forward with. Mm -hmm. so, six back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor. All right, the next is the appointment of James Smith to the Town Planning Board. Mr. Setzer, you're back, sir. Oh, yeah, um, past couple months, we've, the uh, Planning Board been reviewing applications. Um, we've been reviewing some applications for our uh, in-town 
alternate position on the plant board, which we've had vacant for two years. Um, and uh, there's some dis also lots of discussion and back and forth. The board voted to recommend James Matthew Smith, who lives on he lives in town on Children's Road. This one they have to be an in-town resident um, to, to uh, recommend him for that seat. Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion to that effect. Motion. Second. All in favor. Okay. Excuse me just a second, guys. Transportation Improvement Project Municipal Agreement for U5604. Mr. Moore, you're back, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, what we have here is a common municipal agreement between the town of Franklin and NCDOT for the roundabout project for NCDOT to to move our utilities and for a no cost uh, no cost to us improvement of all the utilities water and sewer out there uh, in the roundabout project. Okay. Any discussion and questions from the board? All in favor of the motion to approve the agreement is presented. All in favor. Okay. Okay, we have a road name petition for West Tremont Drive. Mr. Setcher, y'all just back and forth tonight. Um, yeah, what you have for you is a new road being named off of Green Street. Uh, it's for a development. Some of you might have seen if you come up Green Street, we'll build a, currently we'll have five homes built in there. So once you get more than three homes, you have to have a, a named street I mean, it's in town need town uh, approval and this is the petition that from the final one addressing office for the name that the property owners would like to have uh, i think their ultimate goal eventually is to buy some more property and have this road connect to trauma trail and so it'd be a road connecting through so that's why you're seeing the west trauma west, west trauma drive and this is all cool with 911 yes, yeah. dispatch and all that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, okay. they're uh, it's a private road, right? It is private, not town street. Um, they have had some discussions with the property owner that you know he was planning on maybe potentially building a road really wide enough that it could be a town street one day, but that's he hasn't said okay. for sure. But it should be a nice development. Okay. Need a motion to approve the road name petition is presented. Okay, I have a, I have a question. Okay. Does it require a public hearing for proper yes, stand up? All right, I have a motion on the floor. Second. Second. All in favor. Use and occupancy agreement for US 23, US 441, from US 64 State Road 1652. Mr. Moore, sir. Okay, what you have in front of you is the East and the agreement between the town and NCDOT, and these are for both the US 441 Georgia Road project, congestion management, and the roundabout project here in town. Um, basically what these state is that once the work is completed, the town will take the utilities back over, and the NCDOT and its contractors will complete have the workmanship and materials that our specs require basically okay any questions of mr moore if not i entertain a motion uh to approve the agreement is presented Second. Second. okay all in favor okay budget amendments Ms. Oster, you're up. We have three budget amendments um, mm -hmm. in the packet tonight. The first one's um, Amendment 55, and that's for the Water and Sewer Department, and it's to appropriate an insurance settlement check um, in the amount of $1,400. The second one is Amendment number 61 for the Police Department to appropriate an insurance settlement check in the amount of $5,010 into their vehicle maintenance line. And then the third one is Amendment 64 for the Police Department to appropriate uh, funds from Buckeye Bridge LLC um, into their overtime line in the amount of $720. Okay. And that's it. Any questions of Ms. Dolster? If not, I'll entertain the motion to approve the amendments. Okay, have them. Okay, and second, all in favor. 
Okay. Did you want to bring this back up again, Ms. Mashburn? Or you? No, that was all right. We'll scratch him. Uh, the two things that I wanted to bring up before we get to around the table here is Camp Gold Star started here in Franklin, I'm going to say five or six years ago. Uh, Dan Rogers, uh, Duotech, and some other people. It started with a, uh, a major who was a special forces major out of Fort Bragg. And they started a camp for the children of a parent who was a special operations type person who was killed in the military. They bring them here every year and what I have, uh, what I would like to see us do, on June the 19th, they have an urban project where they come into the town, they divide up into six teams, each team will have a special forces soldier and, a, and there'll be a couple of special forces medics with them. They're going to be given projects to do around town and challenges to do around town. It's pretty neat, really. Uh, they'll also be in their, their usual going out in the woods and hiking trails and all that, but they're going to do urban things. And uh, I have uh, just wanted to bring you all up to date on it. Uh, I think they'll be operating for a little couple of hours out of the town hall. One thing that they want to do is to come in and play town board. They could have done it tonight, as far as I'm concerned. But, uh, uh, they want to learn more about municipal government, and I will be here, and some of the town employees, and any of the board members that would like to come and meet these children. I think it would be a real honor, and it would make them feel even more important if any of you are here to do that. What time is that? Uh, I'll have to let you know uh, it's probably going to be in the afternoon, but it's a possibility because of the weather and all. They've got to be flexible. So I just reserve the whole board room. I'd love to make it if you come out. I would love for you to, sir. I really would. But we don't have a day yet or a time. June the 19th. Okay. Mm -hmm. What day week is that? It's a Tuesday. The other thing is uh, I want to bring up again, uh, we had a, had a number, number of complaints. Facebook lit up about uh, parking on Main Street. No, not, not the parallel parking or anything, but the issue of I some merchants, too. some merchants parking on Main Street all day, sometimes with, with two vehicles. And I would like for us to take this back. I think Highlands has the best thing that I've seen. They just ask their merchants not to park on Main Street, and they get a fine if they do. And they define what a merchant is. Uh, it's, there, it's on their website. I made a copy tonight. I didn't make enough for everybody. I apologize. But I would like to see us explore this again, what we're going to do about this. Merchants parking on Main Street. Okay. All right, let's start around the table. Mr. Kimsey? I'm nothing to add. Mr. McMahon? Nothing. Ms. McRae? I'm happy. Okay. I just, I just want to make an announcement that there's uh, just the board, in case anybody's not aware, there's a medication take back event this Saturday at uh, the New Angles on the Georgia Road. I think the town police are helping, and uh, uh, so just letting everybody be made aware what time of that. Is it just all it that? is from 11 to 2. And that is to, if you've got. If you've got pills, any medication, it can be pet meds, it can be anything anybody's got. Folks, please don't flush them down your toilets. You may not realize it, it's building up but they build up in our water treatment plant. They certainly do. Maybe that's why I don't catch you the fish down there. Okay, Mr. Pelpepper, sir. Um, I just wanted to thank uh, our town planner, Justin Setzer, for uh, going to the, was the rural development mm -hmm. planning? Rural economic development agency. There you go. <laughs> thank you for going and getting certified. Absolutely, yes. Way to go, Justin. Okay, Mr. Collins? Yeah, on my continued quest to try to get some uh, dominion and control of the old Island Theater property, uh, Manager Woodard and I have engaged in some discussion with the county and what appears to be kind of shaping up 
now is that the county uh, is anxious. I think they're very happy to see that land getting uh, used. There are some pump stations that uh, through budget and uh, grants and all uh, were required to be put under the name of Macon County, uh, really part of our utility system. And it's always kind of been a, an oddity over the years as to why a few of them retain a county ownership. Uh, not much to it. I think we do most of the repairs. There's a uh, you got to pay the power bill every month. I know that Dinah's late husband Billy, I believe, was anxious to try to get them back under our inventory anyway. And now it's looking like we may try to come up with a deal where we assume those in exchange for a, a lease of satisfactory terms on that property, which as it turns out, we used to bush hog it anyway, even whenever the county didn't own it. We kind of got away from it, but that's kind of where we're going in that direction. And Mr. Collins, if I may add to that, we can certainly have something back to the town council up there at your July meeting. Yeah. I have spoken with Mr. Rowland, and we can get a list of things to look at. And I've, talk, I've talked to Mr. Tate, but I didn't get the feeling there was a whole lot of support. I think it's a Perfect. Okay, anybody else got any other business for the good? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second? All in favor? We're adjourned.